Sports Director Matt Dowell, who joins us live now outside of the arena. Dowell, tale of two different teams in the first and the second half here. Hey Claire, yeah, it really was a tale of two very different halves. South Carolina starting this game a little nervous, 10 turnovers in the first 20 minutes, just a 32-31 lead at halftime. But they took a deep breath at halftime and then came out and just absolutely on fire against the Wolfpack. South Carolina outscoring NC State 29 to 6 in the third quarter and that was enough to really lead them to this win. South Carolina is headed back to the national championship for the third time in program history and they're going for their third national championship in program history. South Carolina going to the locker rooms afterwards. A very exciting night for them of course but they say they have unfinished business and we just left the locker room with the players a little while ago. We got to speak to almost every player on the team and we're going to take you inside the locker room now for some of what the Gamecocks had to say after advancing to the national championship. I just want to congratulate um, NC State for um, for making it to the final four and making it hard for us. Uh, it was not an easy win although you know the score may say differently but I mean we had to play for 40 minutes in order for us to to win the basketball game so um, really proud of of them in their effort to get to the final four um, and then I'm, I'm just proud of our team um, to be able to um, play on this big stage and 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 not play our best basketball in the first half and come back out um, and make some uh, some small adjustments and 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 meet the moment to, to get us to Sunday I don't really know. I know I just felt and then it started hurting a little bit. I kind of got scared, but I seen the doctor. Everything is fine. I just need to do some treatment and rehab and I'll be fine to play Sunday. One more with Camilla. I'm going to cry. I'm going to miss her. And I just think, I know it hasn't hit, it, it's hitting me, but it hasn't hit me yet. I think I just want, I want to win a national championship for her. That's really what I want to do. Yeah, Camilla called you guys bread and butter. What worked so well with you guys out there? You guys exploded in the second half. Camilla, I could find her at any given time. I mean, I know where her sweet spots are. I mean, Camilla, she has gotten better over the over the past years, and I just know like. People know at this point that I'm going to give her the ball, so I try to try to look off from her sometimes. But when she's open, I'm giving her the ball. Like it's no if, ands, and buts. I'm going to give her the ball. Ten turnovers in the first half, and then it was much more controlled in the second. What did you guys tell each other at halftime, or what did coach tell you guys to really kind of blow away in that second half? She said, "Play simple ball. Like stop trying to do all the flashy stuff. Pass the ball, move the ball, reverse the ball. The ball's going to find who's open. It's open. Take your t take the shot. So that's what she said. Play simple ball." I know you said this is a revenge tour, but Sunday I know the title's on the line, but it's also a chance for an undefeated season. That's very rarefied air. Is that on your mind at all to join that elite club? Well, I don't think this team is even thinking about that. I mean, this team really don't know that the season that we're having, we just want to win a national championship. Like every time coach say, do you guys know what y'all what y'all doing? We'd be like, well, we don't really know, but we, we just play basketball. We have fun. We having fun with it. That's really the good thing about it. Just our will, honestly. I mean, we just wanted to punish them and, and really finish the game. I know a lot of people talked about how we uh, usually, or typically in some games, uh, let up on the team and we made sure to you know make a huge emphasis on not doing that. It means a lot. I mean, I'm just proud of myself for p making the right decision and going to the school. I mean, winning I mean, winning a national championship would be like a dream come true for me. So I'm just glad that we're one step closer to that goal. And I'm just proud of this team, man. We worked so hard and we're finally here. So it just means a lot to me. I'm so excited. I mean, I don't really know how, how much it means because I'm a freshman. So, but I know I'll look back on this and be like, oh my God, that was crazy. And I'm just proud of this team. Man. I love my team. If we're hot, we're hot. And we're just going to keep going to that person. Raven had a great game. She was finding her rhythm shots. Powell hit a couple. I mean, Lay had some, just we're playing basketball, man. Uh, it's definitely a long process. I mean, we've been playing with each other for more than six months, and uh, but it's all worth it at the end of the day. We're going to the championship, and hopefully we get the win. It means a lot. It feels good, but the job is not done. I mean, just to be here again and actually being able to be a part of, like, helping the team get here is, is a great feeling. A very happy Gamecock team, but also a team that still has their game faces on because as Raven Johnson said, it is unfinished business. 37-0 this season and going for a perfect season on Sunday. Going to bring in our Amanda Poole now to kind of dive into how this game played out. Amanda, one player that we didn't hear it from in the locker room because she was in the main press room was Columbia native Ashlyn Watkins. 
20 rebounds in this game, the most ever in a Final Four from someone off the bench. Her performance was pretty stellar today. It was, and that's something that head coach John Staley spoke about in the post-game press conference, basically saying, like, yes, Camila Cardoso, she has to do well for them to win, but Ashlyn Watkins is the X factor for them, and we've seen her start, we've seen her come off the bench, but tonight, uh, John Staley said coming off the bench was the right idea and what they needed. Ashlyn Watkins. Such an X factor, like you said, for this team. But really, the X factor in this game was the third quarter. This was a one-point game at halftime. We were all kind of looking at each other like, what are we in store for tonight? Is South Carolina going to go down to the wire? But the Gamecock said, absolutely not. A 29-6 to differential in that third quarter. And the big differential, in my opinion, was the three-pointer. They were 5 for 9 in those 10 minutes. What did you see in, the, in those 10 minutes? I think I saw a team that knew what they needed to do before they even headed into that locker room, and that's something that Coach Daly said that the players had already had their minds set when they went to that locker room, knowing, knowing what needs to be done. And Tahina Pow Pow was asked about it after the game, and they were like, you know, you go on this 17-1 to run in the third quarter, what are you thinking? She's like, sometimes I don't even know what's going on. We're just having fun, and that's been the storyline, and having fun is working for them. Yeah, South Carolina was two for nine from three in the first half. Five for nine from behind the arc in just the third quarter. Tessa Johnson says they play much freer when they see those three-point shots going in. And lastly, but certainly not least, is the star of the show, Camilla Cardoso, who officially on Sunday will play her last game in a South Carolina jersey. And she says she's just having fun out there, and she was having fun tonight. 22 points, 11 rebounds. She says that she's good to go, that she had a little bit of a scare there in the second quarter when she went down, had to go to the locker room. But she says she's good to go. But Amanda, in this whole NCAA tournament, I think Camilla has looked like the pro that she wants to become. And that's what head coach Dawn Staley said as well. She said Camilla's dominating the paint like she's supposed to be asking for the ball. And Raven tells us that if she's open, Camilla's getting the ball because they have been bread and butter, as they call themselves. And that's been really cool to see. And yeah, she's playing like it's going to be her last game because it is. And also we should remind everyone that Camilla didn't play in the fourth quarter or hardly any minutes. So she had 22 and 11. That was on 23 minutes of action. So she's going to the WNBA draft and she's hoping to be ready for it, judging by what we've seen from her in this tournament. South Carolina looking to complete an undefeated season on Sunday. The game is in the afternoon at 3 p.m. here in Cleveland, and we're kind of watching this Iowa-UConn battle right now that's going on at the moment, and Iowa is leading 60-57 to with just under eight minutes to go. It's been a fun one, as we were all expecting, uh, Amanda. So it's going to be fun on Sunday. South Carolina in for a good battle no matter what happens. Now, coming up in just a little bit, our Matt Vereen is going to take over from here in Cleveland. He's got a story on Bree Hall and Sakima Walker coming back home and he's going to answer some questions from Claire about what he sees going forward for Sunday's national championship. Amanda, South Carolina go into the natty for the third time in program history. Claire, we're very excited because we get to stay in Cleveland for a couple <laughs> more days and cover the Gamecocks. But South Carolina, again, going for some big time history on a Sunday. We'll send it back to you in the studio for now. Thanks, guys. Yes, think everyone's taking a deep breath after hearing Camilla Cardoso is feeling all right after that scare in the second quarter there. Definitely such a huge poised presence for the Gamecocks. Glad to see she is OK. We've reached our first time out, though, here in the sports zone. And like Dowell said, when we come back far from Columbia, but not far from home, the Gamecocks that are putting on a show for their friends and family, how they said this was something that they've had marked on their calendars for quite some time. Welcome back into the Watch Fox Sports Zone. Claire Foley here in the Watch Fox Studios, but our whole sports team putting in the work in Cleveland. So let's send it up to Matt Vereen, who joins us live once again. Vereen, obviously this win for the Gamecocks, it's a great feeling knowing that they're heading to the national championship, but for two of these players, there's an added layer of meaning. Absolutely, Claire. Bree Hall and Sakima Walker. A big opportunity today is they got to play in their home state and pull home a win for their family and friends watching. And as they told me and talking to their families, it meant a lot for all of them. It's awesome. It'll mean a lot. I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. A trip to the Final Four, exciting for anyone. But for South Carolina's Bree Hall and Sakima Walker, there's an extra level to it. 
a return home for the Ohio natives and former high school rivals. People yeah, me and, me and Breezy, we played against each other in, um, in high school every year, so I'm, I'm familiar with Breezy. I knew her before I got here. Yes, uh, yes we have. My, our favorite thing is to be like OHIO, which is like a thing that we have here in Ohio. Um, we've taken some pictures together and just, you know, trying to really, you know, live into the moment. But more than a familiar setting for the pair, there's also familiar faces in the crowd, family and friends who helped get them where they are today. It'll be a lot, um, especially for like my family members that are getting a little older that haven't really gotten a chance to like see me play since high school or middle school. I just want to thank my dad and I also want to thank my mother just for pushing me throughout the years, never settling for anything less um, and knowing that I always had more in my tank. I, I think it's amazing, you know, in, in fact, probably I don't know, very early in the season, Bree started with the what ifs. Oh my gosh, if we get back, oh, we got to get back because I want my family to be there. Like just being real excited about it. So for it to actually come true is, is amazing. Hall make an extra note of her dad and their battles around the basket during her childhood, helping grow her game. Um, we used to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one together at the YMCA and just, he really brought out that competitive nature out of me. And while dad is willing to admit he doesn't win many of those one-on-ones these days, I think she finally got over that hill probably 10th grade. Yep, that's what I so, was thinking. Yeah, yep. yep. So it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad she can. There's still some disagreement on dad's skill set. His favorite thing to do in the one-on-one -on -one would be to back me down. Like, no type of moves or anything, just strictly trying to back me down with his strength. She claimed your only move was to was to back her down. I don't know if you want to dispute <laughs> that, if you've got anything else in the bag. Or? I mean, no, there, there was more in the bag. There was more in the bag. But one thing they can agree on, it's a special day for the Ohio natives and their journey to this moment. Oh, wow. It's, it's been it's, it's ups and downs. It's been ups and downs, you know, from her, her freshman year to now. You know, she's, she's, had, to, she's, bat, she's had to battle the, uh, the, the, the mind demons to, to get to this point. And I think she's, I think she's finally there. Finally there indeed, South Carolina women's basketball playing in the national championship on Sunday, which means Bree Hall and Sakiba Walker Claire get one more game, two more days here in their home state of Ohio. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see what they have in store next for the uh, for the championship game on Sunday, Claire. Thank you so much, Bree, and that's such a special thing to be able to play in front of their friends and family right in their home state. Now, while I have you, we heard the analysis from oh did we lose breen oh there he is okay he's back well we have you breen want to keep you here for a minute we heard the analysis from dowell and amanda we talked about all the highs of this game now not to be debbie downer here but let's talk about some of the challenges that these gamecocks face especially as we're heading into the biggest game of the season on sunday still waiting to find out i assume who we have either iowa or yukon neither team is going to let any mistakes pass freely. So do you think anything in the first half, do you think we can just chop, chalk it up to nerves? Is that something you're concerned about that UConn or Iowa is just going to take advantage of early? Yeah, honestly, I don't think we could be worried about it because after 10 turnovers in the opening half, they honestly had None real troubles in the second half, though it's worth noting if we're talking about players who have experience in these things, if you can check behind me here, a couple of former Gamecocks legends from the team, Zaya Cook and Leticia and me here are hanging out here after watching South Carolina win. You want to talk about experience and knowing what it takes to win a national championship. There's two players right there that know it, so perhaps they could have some advice for the team. We got Zaya Cook walking over right here. How you doing? Good, Zaya. How about you? Doing well. I'm doing well. I'm feeling good. We're going to the national championship. Hey, I'm blessed. I'm happy. I'm happy to see them doing this right now. What did you see from the adjustments for them in the second half? They seem to be a whole different team there. They just look focused. I think they went in and they got their jitters out and um, they came out and they just played hard. I've seen a lot of them taking deep breaths before the third quarter started um, and everything started to fall out for them. Obviously, you know what it takes to win a national championship. They're going to try and do it on Sunday. What would your advice to them be as they try and bring another one home for the Gamecocks? I would just say stay poised, stay calm, understand that you guys are here for a reason. Uh, your story is already written, and a national championship is what they'll have. It's Iowa or UConn right now. It is Iowa up four. If you were South Carolina, which one, which one would you want to go again? we got to go Iowa. We need to have that rematch, you know? You got a score prediction if it was Iowa, if they were playing in the National Championship game? I don't even got a score prediction. I just know South Carolina getting a dub. That's all I can tell you. Awesome. Thanks, I appreciate the time.
Claire, awesome getting to talk to Zaya. It's going to be a fun couple days ahead as we look forward to the championship game. Hey, live TV, you never know what's going to happen. Thank you so much, Vareen. We appreciate it. We're going to head to a break right now, but when we come back, the Gamecocks, before all this happened, they had some time to relax, and you know what? They headed to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What instruments they might be trying out after Sunday when the season's over. Matt Dow, Matt Vereen, and Amanda Poole. More sports coverage than anyone else in the Midlands. Sponsored by Lexington Medical Center. Well, the Gamecocks have been up in Cleveland for the last few days. They've had some downtime when they haven't been practicing and resting. And the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in town. So the Gamecocks took a little field trip. Our Watch Fox Sports team caught up with some of the players yesterday and asked them, in the offseason, are they going to be trading in a ball for a musical instrument? And if they are, what they think they might take a crack at. Um, yesterday, I was trying to learn a uh, guitar. And... But I think it's the drums. I, li I like the drums. That's, that seems pretty cool. I like uh, looking cool, and I didn't look too cool doing that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> if you could put any artist in the Hall of Fame, who would you, who would you pick? Beyonce. If she's not in already, she should be in it. I want to learn how to play the piano. I also want to learn how to uh, play the drums, like for real, for real. Because I was in there trying to play them. I played We Will Rock You. I didn't play, like, a real one. Uh, it was real, but, like, a real like go in it. I want to go with it, and I want to learn how to play. Uh, I know I play a flute. Uh, I saw some of them were rocking out. Did you hop on an instrument at all or anything? I like was that? singing. You didn't see me singing. Was in one of the photos. I was singing. I, I believe you. <laughs> you can give us an example of your singing. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know if you want all that.